Oh yeah. What's up guys, it's Drak, and you don't see this angle in the workshop a lot, but this is kind of what I look at half the time while I'm uh, modifying things and stitching them together. And a while ago, I promised you guys that if a certain video got to 5,000 likes, we would do a Boom Nitron build. Bobo, tell them what a Boom Nitron is. It's a Nitron that shoots really fast, made by a guy named Boom on the HVZ forums. There you go. So there's a little blast from the past, a little bit of history. So my good buddy Walt brought us over a Nitron. This bad boy is bone stock, complete with caution to avoid battery leakage sticker. Uh, nobody does Boom Nitrons better than Bobo these days. So we brought him over and it's time for a good old fashioned YouTube collab. So we've got one Nitron, one Bobololo, uh, a couple of rapid strike parts. Oh. oh. Yeah, I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobo, so before we show him the fruits of our labor, it's time for a word from our- Raid Shadow Legends, the new desktop and mobile game that is sweeping across YouTube. The one, the one with excellent graphics and amazing dark realism and fantasy. The one and the same, Bobo. Oh my god! Guys, so delving into the world of Raid, you guys can see that this is our main index screen, showing you a couple of different characters, and then we'll come on over here to the portal on the left side, where you guys can use shards and view your characters in depth and their abilities. Then the tavern, of course, is where you send your boys when it's time for an icy cold one, or if you want to upgrade them for future battles. Or drink them to death? I think you mean sacrifice them for more awesome champions. Speaking of battles, you can come on over to the clan boss where you fight with your teammates against a clan boss for awesome rewards. Or if they don't hold up their end of the deal, you can throw them into the arena and PvP your friends and enemies. If that's not your cup of tea, you can do the campaign where not only can you play through an exciting fantasy adventure, but it'll play through the adventure for you. And then, of course, you have dungeon crawling where you can fight through 10 different bosses, winning new artifacts that'll help you fight more different bosses. Whoa, that sounds so awesome. I downloaded it and I'm playing it right now. Drac, what's your favorite part? Well, Bobo, I'm glad you asked. My favorite part is that you can play both on your mobile phone or on desktop. Or both. <laughs> and best of all, Bobo, season one battle passes out. Whoa! So you gotta download it now, buddy. I already did it for another <laughs> cut of this ad. Hey, here's another phone. Whoa! Again. I can do it again! Yes, sir! <laughs> all right, guys, so what are you even waiting for? If you wanna get all the same sign-up bonuses as my good buddy Bobo, you just gotta go to that video description, check out the special links, and if you're a new player, you're gonna get 100,000 silver, 50 gems, one energy refill, and a brand new free champion. Executioner! All that treasure is just waiting for you to pick it up. Good luck and I'll see you out there. I'm hot! All right, so Bobo pulled a lot of the screws out of this. Turns out you got short boy here, short boy here, here and here, and then you've got a super long one up in the front. I think in here. There's about four different screw sizes. I highly recommend you make an outline in some craft foam or paper and use that as- Definitely keep stuff. track of it. Don't put all of the screws into one black 3.0 container like I do. Uh, then there's gonna be three screws in the battery tray. You're gonna pop all of those out. And then finally, theoretically, this bad boy will uh, separate into two, two shell pieces. Go. Oh, we're almost there. I think there might be one more screw. Oh, you got a straggler? Yeah. Bobo Nolo. No, Bobo. There's so many screws in this thing. All right. The prophecy fulfilled. Does this come take off? That off? Yeah, it let's. Pulls off as one piece. There's going to be a box. Just kind of. <sighs> oh, we're so close. I hate the nitron. I hate getting it undone. And I get that. I got that. You volunteered for this. <laughs> You were kind of voluntold. Oh, oh, I remember now. You have to... Oh, it slides off. Ooh. It comes off at an... It's so overproduced. And then... Yeah, this whole thing comes off. All right, there so there's our, our muzzle <laughs> device. We've formally removed it. All right. And on the inside, <laughs> you have the box that also... What's this? Is pieces. this the launch ramp? Fun. The launch ramp. Ye old launch ramp. All right, so we got a safety mechanism over here. Uh, this is our rev switch, which has escapade. Uh, and then inside, we're looking at a whole lot of stuff. We've got 
Don't let this freak you out. We're taking all of it out of the system. So just pretty much the works. Uh, there's also some safeties up here on both sides. There's the wheel follower right here. Um, all right, so could... let's uh, let's let's talk through this as we go. So this is garbage, yeah. <laughs> Let's or is hear. this the this that looks is, like it's the magazine cache? That is part of the piece that yeah holds the goes from this side. Is this the mag catch? Yep. All right. So this one we gotta save. That is a lock. This is a lock. This bad boy goes. It's kind of a lock. I leave it in, but you know. Well, we're not leaving any locks in, Bobo. That would be ridiculous. Man, some locks are good. It's ghetto modding time. This is solvent welded on. LOL. Got All right, there. so that gets binned. We'll save the screw in case we need it. This is an electronic lock. Here's a here's a little lock for you. Oh boy. A rev trigger lock. Let's keys. let's peel that out. This little guy right here. Yeah, that's so gone. We have to, yeah, you know how it does. You know how we do out here in the Southeast Nerf Club. That's your mag. All right, what's under this panel? Nothing. That is how you get this. Fr so this thing also comes apart in pieces. There's a screw right here. There are two screws right there. That's how you get the front grip of it off. If you want to get to the motor on this side, which we will have to get to, you have to take that apart. Sweet. All right, so we're going to bust this rev switch out because we don't need that. I assume we're using... Yeah, cut it, cut it. We're going to use real switches. Bend. All right, same thing up here, right? Mm hmm So this is our trigger switch. This is what actuates our pusher mechanism. The master has become the pupil. Same thing, we're, uh, cut it, cut it. I need a spring in these snippers. Yeah, well, <laughs> so that one's going down. And then uh, up in here, we're gonna, does this all come out all at once? Yeah, it all comes out at once. Remember how I said you have to take these parts yeah. off the pole? Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna jump cut here. We're gonna gut this and get <laughs> back at it. All right, so Bobo's just gonna ladybug this bad boy open. Once you cut a couple of wires, you also need to get this part off, which is held together here. It's held together this here. This panel holds it. And it's also on. held together down in there. So once you get that off, this just, entire thing comes the whole, out. The whole <laughs> kit and caboodle. This is your main part of the nitron. You got switches here. You got a heat sink on this thing. You got Wait, a heat there's sink. a heat sink on these there's bad a boys? Heat sink. Basically, in, in basic terms, no matter how much voltage you pump into this, it's going to go about the same speed. But we're going to remove this motor because it's absolute garbage and will burn out very quickly. Oh, look, it'll go fast now. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do is in the back, we're going to put a 130 or a 132 motor in here. Oh, it's yeah. going to work really well. This motor's crap. This motor is awesome. Don't have to do anything besides remove the PCB, but we'll get to that point eventually. Get this part out. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what are we removing physically here? These locks we, look superfluous, yeah? So those don't have to be there. Um, the switches are can be cut. This is your disc jam thing. Um, what if that, we just assume we'll never jam? Then you can remove it. Screws right there. So I've gone ahead and removed all the screws from these parts. The only thing holding them in are these, uh, these spring-powered levers in here that are holding them in. Bobo's going to show you how to remove them with pins. I have never done this. He's going to come in. Usually he's going to like just... try and pull those out. And then while he's doing that, I'm going to... Show you how to actually <laughs> take this apart. Well, now you're going to have a rattle inside the blaster. No, we're going to remove all of it, my no, man. No. Those are coming out, and then we're... Yeah, just pull those out, and then this is coming out like this. Ooh, hold on. Let me, let me try some. I, you... I got a big brain idea watching this. Big brain idea. Uh, I don't want to cut through metal, but, you know. It's... Yeah, they won't cut through metal, actually. All right, you did it. We're going to finish this job off camera, boys. But uh, <laughs> basically, we are coming in. We are doing a clean, clean removal like the small at an angle like that. And then these should just pull out. What are you doing? Die wires, die. Oh God. All right, so once you've gutted all of that off the top there and you've taken this off, there was originally a return switch here. If you want to do a three switch, a boom nitron, and I don't know why you would since the objective is to dump as many discs as possible. Uh, you could leave that in theoretically. We've got some spider web and some cat hair in here. This is great, but I've isolated the electronic circuit and Bobo's gonna show you exactly what to do with it. Problem solved. Oh man, oh man, not on my, not on my good Christian YouTube channel.
Uh, so we're gonna have to remove all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten unnecessary amount of screws to get at the motor pinion for this guy so that we can remove it and isolate it completely from its gear train. And then we're gonna carve out the battery tray and then we're gonna isolate these leads. Interestingly enough, Nitrons have one free spinning flywheel here. To stabilize it. And then one that's powered and we're essentially gonna throw them down the corridor uh, that you see here. It fits something like that. Yeah, like you're, that. You're close enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Science. All right guys, so once you remove those screws, this comes off. You can see a bunch of greased gears in here and uh, this should let us get at the pinion down in here for this motor. Then we're gonna remove this motor entirely. Ooh. So these gears are plastic. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it. Gotta be careful. Yep. You have to go in there. That's usually how I do it though. Be very careful. And there we go. There we are. And you're gonna wanna get a 3S motor. So we're using an old unmarked Ryan O motor. Does not need to have a bunch of torque. Cause it doesn't have to overcome a whole yep. lot. Uh, then we're gonna drop this out. We're gonna lock the motor in since they're completely different sizes with some polysilicate uh, or maybe some super glue or some non-sensory. We'll figure that out and we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so once you take this cap off here, you guys can take a look at our original pusher. Uh, this board came off, then we desoldered these leads, then this guy came out. This is, uh, this is pretty garbage. We'll set it aside and do something hilarious with it later. But for right now, we're gonna need to lock this in. Uh, of note, since these screws uh, are not the same spacing here, we're gonna have to like actually lock it in, lock it in uh, after we get the pinion in place. But before we do any of that, since our little uh, leads here don't fit through the original holes, we're gonna have to carve these out just a little bit more. And uh, after we've done that, we can splice leads onto here and run the wires through, but uh, we're gonna need to hook this up like that, there we go. All right guys, so once you've reassembled this, you've got the pinion in there, you've super glued that in or used Loctite or something, this is still a little free spinning and you can see that in the context of our leads. Now we have holes with the leads exposed here, but we wanna make sure that this doesn't rotate around in here. So to that end, what we're going to do, Bobo usually uses epoxy putty, uh, people have shoved plastic down in here, but what we're going to do is we're gonna use polysilicate. We've been using the same stuff for a long time and this is gonna create kind of a, a rubber mold inside here that'll prevent the spinning. And we've got a super micro tip on here, which is gonna let us- the whole thing up. For those of you using 132s or 180s, you're gonna need longer screws. That's to true. put that cap on. Just a fun tip. And you only have to do one half, but we're gonna go ahead and fill it all up since we've already got our gap filling in here. And this kind of cures, like I said, it's a, a rubberish polymer. You are going to overkill, sir. Well, you know, I, I want to be thorough. <laughs> you do not need to go up the sides. You don't need to go up the <laughs> sides. But if you if you want to extend the length of your YouTube video, comment down below because <laughs> I'm pretty convinced YouTube's killing us uh, and our modification style content at this point. So enjoy that sweet, sweet goo ASMR because uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay guys, so we've got our pusher mechanism here. We've run two leads of a 18 gauge threaded wire. They go down into a channel underneath here and then this sets into place. And Bobo is insisting on telling me that that one needs to come right over there. Excellent, so our wires are coming down and now they're in a place that we can put them into a trigger switch. The question is, Bobo is like, yo, we're doing something crazy. With so, this uh, this flywheel setup, and even when I know how to do this, it drives me bonkers. This piece right here goes into this part of the shell, right? Cool. That was easy. The problem is, you have to line up these parts into these little slots right here, while at the same time, whoops, oh, we're already off to time, a great start. You have to take this bit slide this into this part while pushing this part of the shell onto the other side of the shell. Oh, you got it. I, I believe in you, Bobo. And doing all of this while kind ah. of lifting the piece. Ah, this is a, this is a fun and sandwich. Yeah. It's like a BLT. So that goes under here. An instant classic. That goes there. That's Lift together. Off oh. the bottom. Are you yeah, almost we have there? To, no, we have to push this part down a little bit so we can lift this part up. 
Yeah. Over. There we go. Then once you have all that in, make sure this is still in because sometimes it goes under. You screw the pieces that hold that part of the shell back in. It is super frustrating. And I hate it. All right. Well, let's make sure that our wires are pulled through proper slots so that we can eventually add them to a rev switch. But this is looking good. We've checked the polarity on everything. We should be in pretty good shape. Let's lock it down. Of note, the shell is flush on the other side. Yes. We used to think this was great molding. Now I realize that it's just aesthetically necessary to accommodate how weird this thing is. All right, guys, so standard switch placement. We even uh, labeled them this is rev and this is trigger. Uh, this one has to go up, see downsies. Uh, Bobo's first time using polysilicate, and he didn't do a bad job. It's a little different than epoxy putty, it's but weird. it's weird, apparently. I went ahead and wired up an XT60 so that we can battery this bad boy up. Rate of fire is a little bit slower than we originally thought it would be. If you wanted something higher, you could use like a Honey Badger or some 2S motor over volted to 3S. Uh, this guy's going great. We've got good rev speed up there. And uh, other than that, just basic switch placement. Make sure that they're clicky and engage. That's good. That's good. We should be ready to go. Heat shrink all of your leads so that they're nice and clean. And then we're just going to... Exactly. Just like that. That's how it works. Just paw it on. All right, guys. So here it is. It looks like a regular nitron, right? But wrong. This is a full-on boom nitron using that uh, two-switch setup, getting high, high rate of fire and slightly improved performance. But the objective back when people were making boom nitrons was to use them as horde busters for a game called Humans vs. Zombies, which is essentially like live action roleplay meets tag meets nerf guns meets uh, zombie apocalypse. But uh, these magazines are super slick. We've got some 10 rounds and then we have something special uh, for the end game here, but let's just see what we got. And that one appears to be done. So uh, comment down below. Do you guys remember these? The, uh, the, the 40 round Praxis drums. These things are pretty serious and this is going to allow us to fire continuously for quite some time. Now the rate of fire might seem a little slow compared to some of the fully torqued up, fully tuned up, like kind of belt drive blasters of today. But at the time, this was a lot of uh, discs downrange and you could almost spray them in kind of like an arc, uh, which we're going to try to do now on these three makeshift uh, recyclable bin targets. Ah, yes, the very heavy drum. Excellent. That's pretty sweet. So let me know what you guys think down in the description box below. Uh, what should we make next? Get this guy to 5,000 likes and we'll take the top comment and we'll do that as a, uh, a vintage mod guide. I never got around to making one of these back in the day because I was pretty obsessed with pump action springers, but it was really cool to have Bobo over here to, uh, to bring this bad boy to life. Let's take it inside. All right, guys, so Bob and I actually had a ton of fun putting this together. We had a ton of fun with the ad uh, in this video, and we have a ton of fun together. Bobo's old school SC and C. This I is a super Bobo's. This is a super old school mod. Uh, we did it mostly because you guys liked that video, so don't forget to like this video. And if it ever gets to 5,000 likes, we'll do something equally stupid with, oh, we'll brand you. We'll hit you with the Nerf brand. The hot dog bun, it'll be great. I remember. Um, Bobo agreed to that a long time ago, so I go ahead maybe. and think Throw a like on this video and we'll convince him to do so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, definitely check out Bobo's channel. He's got a ton of old school mod guides, some really classic uh, videos in our hobby. And um, I mean, we really, we're, we're trying to fix the issue with the subscriber count right now. Which is They're the going away. <laughs> like a liquidation. <laughs> <laughs> They're on sale. Everything must go. I want to uh, keep them. I don't want them to go. <laughs> don't go. Go subscribe to Bobo Lolo. Bobo Yo-Yo. Um, Patreon.com slash Bobo Lolo. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he was doing. He just, he just came at me like a spider monkey. Um, I think that, that covers it. Boom Nitron is uh, super duper dated, but still super duper fun. Uh, Bobo's a super great guy. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, much love. Nerf Audra. Ah! Ha, 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 ha.